Hi everyone, clinical nutritionist and naturopathic practitioner Paige Welsh here. I just wanted to share a video on um, some COVID-19 immunity and vitamin D information. So um, as, the, as the seasons change and we're getting into some of the warmer weathers, that's a really good sign. That's because viruses thrive in cold temperatures. So as it gets warmer out, it's harder for viruses to survive and thrive. Um, also, when it gets warmer, then we get more natural exposure to vitamin D from the sunshine. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about vitamin D and how to best optimize your absorption of it because I find that even in um, summertime, a lot of my clients tend to be low in vitamin D if they get some blood work done. So blood work should, in my opinion, should read between 60 to 80 nanograms per milliliter for optimal immunity. Um, so if you're below 40, then you're not going to have the strongest immune system um, to protect you from things like a virus. So um, make sure that you get your levels checked. That's really the best way to know. So um, some tips on how to absorb vitamin D from the sun better. Well, first of all, you need as much skin exposure as possible. So if you're outside and you're in pants and a long sleeve shirt, you're really not going to absorb that much vitamin D. So try to have as much skin showing as you can, um, especially between the hours of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's when you're going to absorb it the most. And then you also don't want to shower after you've been outside your absorption of vitamin D actually takes place through the skin. So if you go and shower right away, then um, you're gonna interrupt that process and wash some of it off. Um, so make sure you're, you're trying to sh wait on showering as long as possible. And then um, last, you just want to try not to wear sunglasses, especially if you're gonna um, like eat outside during lunch, that's one of the ways that I get vitamin D exposure during the week. And that's because when you are blocking your eyes, you're not gonna be able to get the sunlight into the eyes as well and absorb um, the vitamin D, which is really interesting. So try not to use sunglasses as much. So if you find that you do have low levels of vitamin D or you're not getting outside as much as you should or can in the summertime, then you may need to consider supplementing. So for supplementing, I always recommend looking for D3, not D2. D3 is the more active form, the more absorbable kind. And um, what a lot of people don't realize is D3 really needs to be with vitamin K2 and a little bit of magnesium. If you're not taking it with vitamin K2 and magnesium, you need two and a half times more vitamin D. And that's because you need vitamin K2 and magnesium to actually absorb um, the vitamin D, get it into the cells and tissue better. It's really interesting, a lot of times um, if I see too high levels of vitamin D, which is pretty rare, but I've seen it, it's usually a sign of vitamin K2 deficiency, and that's because you're just not utilizing it very well. So one of my favorite forms of vitamin D is um, by Systemic Formulas. It's called DV3, and they've got um, vitamin D3, vitamin K2, magnesium, and other nutrients that can really help the absorption and the utilization. So some common symptoms of low vitamin D would be um, issues with your mood, depression, um, mood swings. A lot of people with low vitamin D can have pain, weakness, cramps, um, bruising easily, headaches. Um, and then vitamin K2 deficiencies are actually pretty similar to vitamin D ones um, as well. But the Vitamin K2 can be common if you see like a low bone density scan or if you get a lot of bones that break easily. Um, think of that for vitamin D K2 as, long as, as well as excessive bleeding. And then magnesium deficiencies are very common. I see them a lot in the clinic. Some of the most common symptoms you'll get with low magnesium would be high blood pressure, restless legs, cramping, painful menstrual periods, anxiety, insomnia, mood swings. Um, magnesium is needed for over 300 different processes in the body. So it can be a pretty um, needed nutrient that a lot of us just getting aren't getting enough in of with our food. 
So one last thing I wanted to mention is that um, because we are expecting a second wave of COVID-19 in the fall, um, I just want to encourage everyone to do everything they can to optimize and strengthen their immune system. And also, I don't think this is being talked about enough, but to keep your fear as low as possible. So when we have a lot of anxiety or stress, that will actually deplete your immune system. Fear is not good for your immune system at all. So your immune system will protect you internally from things like bacteria and viruses and your nervous system um, that's the fight or flight response a lot of people have heard of will protect you from external stressors. So we need energy for both of those. And if we're putting our energy towards that fight or flight response, we don't have enough energy for the immune system. Think of it this way. Let's say you had the flu and you were also being chased by a tiger at the same time. Your, immune, your body is going to prioritize that energy to help keep you away from that tiger, keep your body going rather than fighting off the flu. So if you are um, anxious or worried about this, um, try to address it. Do things that can keep your stress low. Exercise, uh, meditate, pray, journal, aromatherapy, whatever you need to do to work on that. There are supplements that can help as well. I'd be happy to go over that with you if you have any questions. But just wanted to bring up that fear is probably not the best emotion for the immune system. So if you have any more questions, um, you can find me online at Practical Page. You can find me at TotalHealthInc.com um, or come visit me at the clinic. All right. Have a great day.